the stolen daffodils. It was a foggy day in March that found me idling along Baker Street with my hands in my pockets, a scarf wound round my neck and two pairs of socks on my feet. The BBC had commissioned me to give a talk on village life in India and ambling along Baker Street in the fog thinking of my talk. I realized I didn't really know much about village life in India. True, I could remember the smell of cow dung smoke and the scent of jasmine and the flood waters lapping at the walls of mud houses. But I didn't know much about village electorates and that sort of thing. I was on a point of turning back and making my way to India House to get a few facts and figures when I realized I wasn't on Baker Street anymore. Wrapped in thought, I had wandered into Regent's Park and now I wasn't sure of the way out. A tall gentleman wearing a long grey cloak was stooping over a flower bed and going up to him I said, Excuse me, sir, can you tell me how I get out of here? How did you get in? He asked me in an impatient voice and when he turned and faced me I received a severe shock. He wore a peaked hunting cap and in one hand he held a large magnifying glass. A long, curved pipe hung from his mouth. He possessed a long, steely jaw and his eyes had a fierce expression. Good heavens! I exclaimed. You're Mr. Sherlock Holmes. And you, sir? He replied with a flourish of his clock. Are just out of India, unemployed, and due to give a lecture on the radio. But how did you know all that? I stammered. You've never seen me before. I suppose you know my name too. Elementary, my dear Bond. The BBC note paper in your hand on which you have been scribbling reveals your intention to give a talk. Your name is on the envelope which you hold upside down behind it. It is 10 o'clock in the morning and if you were not unemployed, you would be sitting in an office. And how do you know I'm from India? I said a trifle resentfully. Your accent betrays you, said Holmes with a superior smile. I was about to turn away and leave him when he laid a restraining hand on my shoulder. Stay a moment, he said. Perhaps you can help me. I'm surprised at Watson. He promised to be here ten minutes ago. 